Hello game devs, in this video I'm going to teach you a simple trick that you can use in your C-sharp code to make building games a whole lot easier and remove a lot of problems and complexity that tends to build up when you're making a fun or interesting game that's got a lot going on. What we're going to talk about today specifically is interfaces and I'm going to show you exactly how to use them in a damage system really quickly to make it so that your code is extensible and you can make your characters damage anything. This applies for all different types of code though. It doesn't have to be damage specific, but I find that that applies in almost every game, so it's a perfect example. Here I've got a robot that can shoot these little spiders. I can duck down and shoot and kill these spiders and this bee right here that has an enemy script on it. The snail I can't kill because it doesn't have anything to kill him yet, and these blocks don't blow up or anything. Let's take a look at the code and see how I can use interfaces to modify it, extend it out, and make it so that anything can be easily destroyed and do it in its own way. Before we get into the enemies and interfaces though, let's take a quick look at the player and its ray gun to see how that's working because it is an important part. So here I have my player and down deep in the robot's hierarchy where he's animating, I have a ray gun with a ray gun script on it. It references a laser blast prefab that we'll take a look at in a moment. And then it's got some offsets for position that I'm not using and a blast speed. Let's open up the ray gun script and take a look at how it works. It's using the new input system. We get the player input module from our component and parent, which is the player object. We get that, we register for the fire event or the fire action started event, and then call start fire. Start fire gets a pool or it gets a pooled laser blast from our laser blast pool and then launches it in the correct direction, calling the laser blasts launch method. Let's take a look at that which just sets the initial position. You can see that to the launcher's position, it sets the speed to the speed that we've passed in and the initial direction. The direction could change of a blast, but right now we just set the initial direction and use that for the velocity and then set the velocity. What we care about though is when it impacts something, when it actually hits another thing, which happens right here in On Collision Enter 2D. Let's make this nice and big and take a quick look at how it works. So when this laser blast object, which we'll take a look at the prefab in a moment, collides with any other 2D object, the first thing that we do is disable the object. Well, first we log out the name of the thing that we hit. Then we disable this laser blast object and then check to see two things. First, did it hit the player? If so, then I tell the player to take some damage. I go through and say, hey, if it hits the player, then I check to see if there was a player there in the collider. And if so, we tell that player to take damage. This is so that if an NPC's hit is coming through, I can have it only hit players. And if a player hit is coming through, I can have it not hit NPCs. There are plenty of other ways to do this, but this spells it out very simply in code. The other option, the one that we care about when we're hitting an enemy is right here. So if it's not a ray blast that hits players, then it will look for the enemy component. And if that's not null, call take hit. And the take hit comp method on the enemy will reduce its health. If the health gets below zero, it will kill the enemy and return true. It'll also set a trigger for some animation, and then if we didn't die, it will set it to false. So if we did die, though, we don't set the hit trigger because we're going through a death animation instead. So how do we extend this out so that it works on more things than just enemies? First, let's go back to the scene view and take a look at our objects that we've got here. First, we had a spider. The spider had that enemy script on it, which is why I'm able to blast and shoot it. Same with this B. The B also has an enemy script on it, so I'm able to blast it. The snail, however, doesn't have an enemy script. It has a snail script on it that works quite a bit different than a regular typical enemy. And we also have a block over here that I'd like to be able to destroy as well. It has a destructible script, but not an enemy script. So I've got a couple of options here. I could obviously try adding like the enemy script to both of these, the snail and the block, but that's probably gonna add some unexpected or unwanted behavior. In fact, I know it will because my enemies do things like moving around. Well, actually, I don't know if this one does any moving. No, just deals with squishing and having health and having the animator and stuff. A lot of things that this block isn't going to have. And my snail wants to deal with dying a totally different way because when it takes a hit, depending on how it took a hit, I'm, I want it to kind of flip over like a turtle shell in Mario. If I just shot it though, I do want it to die. So what can I do to change this code? Well, what we're going to do is modify that blaster shot. If we go to the ray gun and we find our laser blast prefab, so go select it right here. 
you'll see that my laser blast prefab has this laser blast script on it and I'll open that script up. And inside of this laser blast script, instead of looking for an enemy, let's add in a way to use an interface that allows us to hit any type of object. So we're gonna create a new interface that we'll add to the enemy, we'll call it I take hits, and then we'll add it to the enemy. Let's start by taking a look at the interface. First off, you wanna note that the interface here is in its own file. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but I generally recommend and prefer to have my interfaces in their own files, just like my class files. So just like my ray gun and my laser blaster in their own file, my I take hits is in its own file as well. You'll also notice that it starts with a capital I and then another word. And that's a pretty common and typical syntax for interfaces in C Sharp. If you look at a lot of Microsoft examples, they all start with the I, and it's what I like to use as well. I also like to either have them be adjectives or um, verbs. So usually adjectives tend to be better, but take hits works really well for me, and it's easy to ex explain and easy to understand. So I'll use a verb here as well. So sometimes I might use like I damageable, or I take hits, or I take damage, or something like that, something that makes it very obvious what the interface is doing. I take hits works for me because I know that I'm just going to have this thing have a method that is called take hit, just like we had on our enemy. So if we look at our enemy, we have that take hit method, we want to copy this syntax, or this signature really, the bool take hit. So I go back over to my I take hit, that's exactly what I have. I also don't have the public keyword here. That's important because the public is already implied. If you have something on an interface, the interface is the public facing interface. So everything is public and you can't actually add that keyword. I think if I try to save, I'll actually get an error. Let's see, if I hit Control Shift B. Oh, I don't get an error anymore. I used to get an error from having that there, but I don't need to have the word public there. It's kind of automatic and implicit. So now that I have this I take it, how do I use it? Well, first thing I wanna do is copy it. So I hit Control C and go over to my enemy. I'll go right up to the top and after the mono behavior, I'll put a comma and paste in my I take hits. This will tell the game system or the engine or basically the compiler that our enemy is going to be a mono behavior class, but it needs to implement every method that I take hits says it needs to implement. Right now, that is just the take hit method returning a bool. And since that's already in our enemy, it should work fine. I can save, do a build, and have no errors. By the way, it's Control Shift B to do a build. I use that hotkey all of the time. All right, let's go back into the code where we do the laser blast. If I go to my laser blast now, and instead of getting an enemy, I get an I take hits. Well, now it's going to find the object no matter what type of thing it is, as long as it implements this interface. So if my if I shoot an enemy, it should find and call this I take hit method. Let's go test that out, and then we'll see how we add it to the blocks. And maybe the snails as well. Or maybe you have to wait and uh, join the boot camp if you want to see how to add it to the snails. This is actually all part of um, some of the lessons from my course. So here we go. Shoot this, that guy, shoot that guy, they both die. I shoot this guy, oh, let's see if I can shoot him. I got bad aim here, and he dies as well. But now I wanna make it so that my blocks and my snails can die. So let's make the code change and add the interface to them. Now to make these blocks destructible, we're gonna to need to modify the destructible script. We could of course add a different script, but I already have a destructible script that allows these things to be blown up by lasers. Again, it's part of the coursework stuff if you're interested in that. But we don't care about that right now. What we care about instead is making it so that this thing can be destroyed with laser blasts, or not laser, ray gun blasts. So we're gonna add the interface, I take hits, and save. And now if I do a build, I should expect to see an error, and here's the error message saying that destructible does not implement interface member, I take hits, take hit. So what we can do is hit alt enter on I take hit, so I go select it, put my cursor up there, hit alt enter, and hit implement interface. This will actually generate the method, I'll scroll down here, let's go find it, this take hit method, and it'll do absolutely nothing. I wanna replace this though with some logic, I'll just paste it in, that's going to play a particle whenever we take a hit, if it's not already playing. It's gonna log the last time that we got hit, and then it's going to explode and return back false because it didn't die. Actually, I think I wanna return back true because this thing did die. 
Now, let's go take a look at our explode code. It just sets the object to inactive. That's the same code that we have from take laser damage. I was thinking maybe it'll play a particle, do some sound effects and other stuff. But for now, take hit doesn't really matter what it does as long as it kills the object. Let's save, go back into Unity, and run over there. And now I should be able to shoot this block, shoot an enemy, and have it work no matter what on, on both of them without having to add in special casing. I don't have to now check to see if I hit a destructible in my ray gun blast. How do I deal with that? I just... Shoot it, and let's see. Each one I hit, yep, it works. My particle's not playing, but I think that's because I disabled my object too early. All right, so that's kind of the core of interfaces. Again, you can extend this out. You can use these interfaces for all kinds of things. Anything that you want more than one class to do, you want the same shared behavior on, this is a good option or possibly a good option to look at. If you find that you're writing code that's doing a, hey, is this an enemy? Is this a player? Is this a destructible thing? Is this something else? And you've got a bunch of if statements or maybe a big maybe a big switch statement as well, then checking or considering interfaces is probably worthwhile. You should see if there's a way that you can work it. And of course, make sure that you've committed all your stuff to source control before you start experimenting with that. I did a video on that, uh, I think yesterday. You can go check it out. And uh, if you're interested in more of this kind of content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to check out the courses down below. Got courses where I cover all of this stuff in depth and have a lot of fun doing it. All right, see you in the next video. Um, bye.